guys, it's Geekonomics here and this is a video for those of you who are doing the microeconomics paper for the new A-level specification, so that's the GCE specification, started September 2015. Today I'd like to run through the whole concept and issue of buffer stocks with you and I think that this is a potential area for certainly an extended answer question if not a fully blown essay. So let's get to what are these buffer stocks? So buffer stock schemes are implemented by governments, local, national, um, European Union wide in many instances in order to number one ensure that a producer has a stable income and number two to ensure that prices remain fair and consistent for consumers. So, in other words, we wish to iron out with these buffer stock schemes the enormous fluctuations that can sometimes arise with the price of, particularly in this case, agricultural products. So, let's get to a few diagrams because diagrams are key when it comes to analysing buffer stock schemes. So those of you who are using the new uh, OCR, uh, September 2015 specification, using the new textbook, this will probably be the diagram which you will be most familiar with. It's one which is uh, in the book, I can't remember exactly whereabouts or what page. So we've got our demand curve, we've got a supply curve down here which we are labelling as supply glut, in other words this is in a time when the weather is good, the harvest is good, everything in the garden is rosy, ladies and gentlemen. And when we have a glut, then this is the price under the glut conditions, and this is the quantity under the glut conditions. So we'll call this point A. We're also told that in bad times, when the weather is poor and the harvest is poor, then also we can have a supply curve somewhere up here, so this is supply poor, and as a consequence of that our price is P poor and the quantity Q poor. So you can see here ladies and gentlemen that between equilibrium points A and B there's quite a significant uh, variation there in both the price and the quantity, the price being the main thing that we're interested in here. And so a buffer stock scheme can be implemented and enforced and run by a government in order to ensure that prices remain stable at a certain level. What might that level be? Well, let's, for the sake of argument, say that that level is here, across this dashed line. So we're calling this P star. Okay. So that's the price level that we wish to maintain in this particular market regardless of what the supply conditions are. And so we need to do some analysis here to find out what would happen when there's a glut and what would happen when there is a rather poor harvest, a feeble harvest in that respect. So let's take for example the first case scenario here where we have a glut. So, in the time of a glut, the price is forced down, as you can see, to a very low level. Now, obviously, in terms of a farmer's income, that's not very good, not very healthy. From the point of view of a consumer purchasing, that's a good thing, but not good for the farmer's income. And we want now to force this back up to P star. We want the P glut to rise back up. And as one of my students was saying this, this, this morning, if you can sort of think of this in the same way that exchange rates uh, under the managed uh, system are controlled, then the, the operation of this buffer stock system is quite similar. So if you look along the line of P star and consider what is the supply and what is the demand at P star. So at P star, the supply is here, so it's where the price line is intersecting the glut supply curve. So that is the supply. What is the demand? Well here's our demand curve, so we're looking for the point at which the P star line intersects the demand curve and that is here. 
And so you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, quite clearly that supply is greater than demand. So what do we call that? We refer to that as a surplus. Under a buffer stock system, any surplus produce is bought up, guaranteed to be bought up, in fact, by the government. And when you buy something, ladies and gentlemen, let's remember this, when you're buying something, what is it that you're actually doing? What is it that you're doing? You are demanding a particular good. And so as a consequence of this, the fact that the government will buy up this surplus, the demand curve is shifting to the right. So in order to restore the equilibrium back to P star, this guaranteed price, the demand curve would have to shift outwards to something like that, so D2. And so when we shift the demand, we're now moving from this equilibrium, we're moving back up here to point C, and we have restored the equilibrium price back to uh, back to P star once again. So that's the scenario for a glut when you've got the oversupply. We've got this surplus here and we wish to uh, move the price back up to P star. So what about uh, the opposite of that obviously when we have the poor harvest? Let's just have a very quick look at that again. I would recommend, ladies and gentlemen, that you do practice drawing these diagrams. Um, the more often you do them, obviously, the better you'll get at them. And when you're thinking about the exam, you want to be swift with your diagrams. So do try and repeat the process of drawing these all the time. So there we've got supply poor. And we had our P star line here. We had P poor here, and we had P glut here. Quantity points also. Quantity poor, quantity glut. Okay. So, what about the scenario where we move not to an excessive harvest, but to a poor harvest? So, what will happen is we'll end up at this point, well, I'm going to call this point A on this particular diagram, where the price is high. Now, obviously, in respect of the farmer in this case, this is a very good thing. Incomes are, and revenues, revenue streams will be good. However, for the consumer, not so good. And so in this instance, now what we want to do, and what the government wants to do, they wish to force the price back down from P poor back to P star. What needs to be done here, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let's analyse this a little bit more closely. So what's the supply at P star? The supply is here where the price line intersects the uh, supply curve. So that's the supply. What's the demand? It's here where the price line intersects the demand curve. And so we can see here that demand is greater than supply. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we have a shortage. Now, if this buffer stock scheme has been set up properly and set up effectively, there will be surpluses already in storage, and so it's simply a question of releasing some of that surplus back into the marketplace, selling it back into the marketplace, and as you know, as you increase the supply, that will reduce the price. And we can illustrate this as well on the diagram by shifting S1 poor would now be shifting to S2. Call it poor if you want, but it's not so poor because obviously we're remedying the situation here. So as a consequence of that shift of supply, the price moves back again. So the supply curve is shifting, and why is the supply curve shifting? Because some of the surplus from the previous years has been sold back into the marketplace. Okay, so that would be sort of your uh, diagrammatical analysis of this. Now, if you get an essay on it, you will obviously have to evaluate. So, when I looked at this this morning with my students, we came up with uh, about nine or ten different evaluative comments that you could have for this. So, let's just uh, run through what some of those might actually be. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, evaluative comment number one. I've just got a list here just to want to 
miss anything out for you. So, number one. This scheme, generally speaking, is used for agricultural products. Now, the scheme will work well as long as the government rotates its buffer stocks. Because obviously, agricultural products will not last forever. They are perishable. And so because they are perishable, they need to be rotated over time. And so evaluative comment number one is, yes, that this will work well, but the buffer stocks need to be rotated. To be rotated. And they need to be rotated so that the perishable items do not, um, obviously, do not end up causing more damage to other Abigail Brown, please come to reception. Thank you. Okay, point number two. Look at this diagram, ladies and gentlemen. In the glut times, the, this is the period when the government intervenes, steps in and buys um, the produce. So they're buying cheaply and selling at a high price. So to some extent, this is in the government's interest because it will be generating revenue because it's similar to sort of share trading and so on. You're buying cheap and then hopefully selling off at a higher price. So that there is a, a revenue generation aspect to this. Point number two, evaluative point number two. Evaluative point number three, particularly for the developing nations and the developing world, a scheme like this uh, in a country which so often has problems with uh, ensuring food supplies, a scheme like this can maintain and at least ensure that countries have those simple bare necessities of life. And let's not forget that all of these, um, all of these uh, crops which are being produced, overproduced in many instances, are stored in warehouses and so on and oftentimes rather than selling them into our own domestic markets we send them off to the, the developing world as a form of uh, overseas overseas assistance, overseas, um, yeah, overseas donations in that respect. So it guarantees food supplies now of course I guess you'd have Mr. to say, Wilgos, please contact reception. Thank you. I guess you'd have to say that on the downside, obviously, um, all of these things require storage, and eno enormous storage at that, and very potentially very costly in terms of warehousing and so on. So that can be an issue. Next point, evaluation comment number five. If the government is saying to farmers, we will guarantee if you think back to the first diagram where we had the glut, we will guarantee to buy up any surplus distance here being the surplus, we will guarantee to buy this up. Well if the government is using its money there, then the amount of money that it has to spend on health, education and so on is obviously reduced, so there's an opportunity cost element to this. Not only is there an opportunity cost element to it, there is also the fact that potentially if these crops are bought and then stored for too long, they will just have to be disposed of. Now financially that doesn't make sense. So there's the potential that this could uh, be a loss making enterprise or certainly it could be costly and money, money which taxpayers money could be lost. Next point. Very important point, I feel. This is similar to your price, uh, your maximum price diagram, ladies and gentlemen. If the price falls to the glut price, uh, the government is saying, right, this surplus, we are going to guarantee you P star. Farmers, we guarantee you P star. No matter how much extra you produce, we guarantee it and we will buy it from you at a price of P star. Well, if you are any like logical-minded uh, farmer, you will say to yourself, I'm going to grow as much as I possibly can because I know that what I can't sell into the marketplace, the government will simply buy it from me. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a clear form of allocative efficiency. Not allocative efficiency, allocative inefficiency. 
And this is one of the problems of such a pricing scheme when, when you're guaranteeing uh, prices. And I'm sure you've looked at this when you have considered the whole notion of uh, guaranteed maximum prices. That would be evaluative comment number seven. Evaluative comment number eight. We've got a series of prices here, the GLUT, uh, the poor price and the P star price. And I guess uh, one of the difficulties would be maybe not so much determining the glut price and the poor price because you could effectively over time you could work out uh, where more or less where that might be dependent upon the demand and supply. But how do you actually determine and assess what is an appropriate level of P star? What, what's appropriate for the farmer and what's appropriate for the consumer? So appropriate pricing can be difficult to determine. And finally, or penultimately should I say, if you look carefully at this diagram, you can see that the amount which, is being, which the government is buying, so the surplus, is this distance here. So it's between there and there, that distance. And then the amount that is being sold into the market is that distance. Now this distance here, the amount of purchases, is much bigger than the amount of sales. So you're always... Uh, if, it, if, if the market remains like this, you're always going to be buying more than you're selling. And for some countries, that may eventually become unsustainable because you're forking out more money than you're getting back in revenue. So there's a whole issue to do with the actual sustainability of such a project. And then finally, to come back to a very important point, which is at the very end of the AS microeconomic specification, all about government failure. And we can link, so point number 10, I would say, would be the whole notion of government failure. Now, we can link that back to this notion of allocative inefficiency. When the government is introducing and guaranteeing to buy up crops for a certain price, and farmers have an incentive to produce those crops just as much as they can, well, that is an intervention by the government, which is clearly uh, the, the incentives there, the incentives of the farmer, are not the incentives which the market necessarily would like to see, particularly in terms of the amount of output. And so that is a form of allocative inefficiency, because the government, by saying, will buy everything up, then you get this oversupply into the marketplace. Now obviously you might say, well, we can donate this to foreign aid and so on and so forth, but in terms of our own domestic economy, that's not the case. And so I think also in terms of your wider reading on this, perhaps you should be thinking about the common agricultural policy and the way in which the common agricultural policy, which did suffer from this problem, then introduced the whole notion of set-aside land, which again is a sort of an extension of this government failure, and what happened with set-aside land was that the government said, OK, we acknowledge that this scheme isn't working. We know that we're getting too much produce. We are now going to say to you, Mr. Farmer, set aside some land. In other words, just leave it. Don't grow anything on it, but we're still going to pay you. Now, again, there are certain um, aspects of that policy which are not exactly logical. So... Um, in your wider reading, that's something that you may wish to have a look at, and there is a very small section on that in the AS textbook. Okay, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Buffer stocks. Um, certainly, if you get an essay on this, a lot that you could get your teeth stuck into. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Any messages you want to send me, any questions, do get in touch, and I'll do my very best to get back to you.